Hello everyone and welcome back to the next day of your 30 minutes of yoga for 30 days yoga challenge benefiting St. Jude's Hospital. I am so excited to share our first asana or stretching emphasis yoga day today. So for the next two days of the series, we'll be doing this chair yoga asana video. I invite you on the first day to focus a little bit more on the movement, on becoming familiar with the poses in your body. But on the second day, I invite you to focus more deeply on connecting your breathing to the movement. If it feels a little bit overwhelming on day one, don't worry. It will become a lot easier on day two when you're much more familiar with the shapes. The only thing that you need for this practice is a sturdy chair, preferably nothing that rolls so we can prevent any mishaps or falls from happening. If you have these items, you're welcome to grab a yoga mat or a towel to have underneath your feet. And another thing that can be helpful is grabbing onto a yoga bolster or if you have a couple of fluffy pillows or a little stack of blankets, this can be helpful if you have a shorter stature or shorter legs to place underneath your feet. Really make sure you can plant your feet firmly, which can also be really helpful for poses like this, where we're folding forward and we might have a hard time reaching something that's stable. So grab all of those items and let's get started. So scoot far enough forward in your chair that your feet can firmly plant into the floor. If that's feeling difficult or uncomfortable, you might like to try placing something underneath your feet so you can really ground into the floor beneath you. Slowly start to rock back and forth on your sits bones and look for a spot where you're able to sit up nice and tall. Your belly and diaphragm have room to move, but you still feel relaxed. Release your hands somewhere comfortable. And decide if it feels better to have your palms down for a more grounding energy. Or maybe you try flipping your palms upward. This can feel a little bit unnatural at first, but energetically it represents surrendering and being willing to accept something new from your higher power or from the universe. Once you're feeling settled in with your lower body, inhale to squeeze your shoulders up and into your ears and exhale, roll them back and down. Let's take that two more times. Inhale up, exhale back and down. Inhale up, exhale back and down. If you'd like, you can find a little bit of neck movement here or any other movement your body needs to prepare for a couple of minutes of stillness. When you're feeling ready, start to either blink your eyes closed or you can just soften your gaze to your drishti or your looking place. Whatever you choose, start to embrace some stillness and draw a little more attention into the present moment and into your breath. Traditionally in yoga, we breathe in and out through the nose, finding equal lengths of inhale and exhale. And this kind of breathing represents balancing out the yin and the yang or yang energies within our bodies. You can take this breathing or notice if it appeals to you more to find a longer exhale or a pause between the breath or maybe to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Relax into your jawline, smooth the space between your brows. Begin to just notice where your thoughts gravitate towards. Maybe stillness and calm comes easily today. Or maybe more likely you're struggling with what we call monkey mind. Thoughts jumbled up, 
entering your mind like a whirlwind. Just allow yourself to notice what your thoughts are like without adding any judgment, without adding any criticism. We're just noticing what you've brought to the table today and breathing into that. All vibes and all emotions are welcome. Now, if you'd like, I invite you to begin picturing the balloons we found the other day. You wrap each thought up into a balloon. You thank it for the purpose it once served and wish it well as you let it go. Watching the balloon float up, up, up until maybe it pops or just flies out of your field of vision. Today you might have five balloons or you might have 500. Continue grounding into the rhythm of your breath and release as many balloons as you need to. If you'd like, I invite you to draw your hands together at your heart center, palms together like you're praying. Press your thumbs into your sternum and see if you can connect with a sense of open-heartedness, compassion for yourself and for others. And if you'd like, I invite you to set an intention for your yoga practice today. An intention is a word or a short phrase that, encapsulate, that encapsulates what brought you to your mat and to your practice today. It might be something as simple as, I want to try something new. I want to become more flexible. I want to relax more. Maybe it's something more spiritual or something more personal. If you'd like, find your personal intention and imagine breathing it into your heart space. And let's seal in our meditation with one round of cleansing breath. Take a deep inhale through your nose and let it go out your mouth. In your time, slowly start to blink your eyes open and come back into the physical room around you. Scooch forward in your chair as much as you would like so that you're able to press all four corners of your feet into your mat or the ground. And if you'd like, you can shift back and forth on your sits bones a little bit, finding a comfortable position. Grab onto the tops of your legs. And as you inhale, pull your chest forward, shoot your tail back, open your throat and gaze upward. Exhale, push your thighs away, curl your chin into your chest, tuck your tailbone. Inhale to pull forward, open up through your collarbones, look up. Exhale, push and round, squeeze everything in and separate your shoulder blades. So we're making some dramatic movements with the spine here, inhaling to pull forward, open up your chest exhaling to curl in make a c curve with your spine and open your thoracic spine inhale to pull open exhale push and round in keep finding this movement but move with your breath you might like to go a little bit slower or a little bit faster than i'm going and as you breathe, start to really notice what's going on in your body. 
Where do you feel the most sensation or stretch? Are there any places that feel like they need a little bit more movement or a little more love here? Let's take three or four more of these and really dive into your pace and your breathing. Start to meet me with a neutral spine and your hands to your heart center and take a deep breath in through your nose and let it go out your mouth. I like to do this kind of cleansing breath a lot after we've done a few asanas or the same stretch because this helps to release any emotions that we've brought up to the surface. Now let's take a very similar stretch but add on some shoulder mobility. Interlace your hands in front of you as you breathe in, take the same spinal movement, but lift your knuckles up high. So puff your chest up, shoot your tail back, look up, draw your knuckles high to the sky. Pause here or flip your palms skyward for a deeper stretch. For the deepest option here, shimmy your biceps by your ears. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, flip your palms back, curl your knuckles in towards your knees, tuck your chin towards your chest, tuck your tail. Inhale to lift up, draw your hands high. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, curl in. The beautiful thing about yoga is you choose how far you take this. Your movements can be smaller or larger than mine, slower or faster. And I invite you to find some organic movement. So one example is at the top, I often like to tilt a little bit side to side or find a little twisting. If you'd like to keep it simple, you can absolutely just stick with up and down. But if you'd like to explore some spinal movement, I always deeply encourage to follow that impulse and find authenticity within your body and your movement. Let's take three or four more of these. Moving at your pace and finding any extra movement that your body wants. Start to meet me with a neutral spine and hands to heart. Pause here and notice if you feel any fire or heat within your shoulders or anywhere else along your spine. Take a deep inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. All right, so now that we've gotten a lot of flexion and extension into the spine, we want to find some of the other six spinal movements or pratapana. So now let's go into some sideways motion. Take your right hand either onto your right thigh or onto the side of your chair, maybe an armrest if you have one. Lean over to the right and sweep your left arm up and overhead. Feel free to bend into your right elbow as much as you would like to. Or you can even trace your right hand down the side of your chair. For the deepest stretch, roll your left shoulder back, stack it on top of your right shoulder. And for an even deeper stretch, look up towards your left elbow pit. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, maybe you sink a tiny bit more or maybe you stay right where you are. Breathe in, lift both arms up to the sky and switch sides. Take your left hand down to somewhere comfortable for you. Tilt towards your left side with your right arm up nice and high. For a deeper stretch in your side body and shoulder, roll your right shoulder over your left. Maybe adjust where you're grabbing onto. Make sure that your right sits bone stays planted down so you're nice and secure. For an even deeper stretch, look up towards your right elbow pit. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Maybe you just sink a little millimeter more or maybe you stay right here for one more deep breath. Mm -hmm. 
Breathe in, lift both hands up high and pull your hands together to your heart center. Now that we've gotten used to the movement, let's turn it into a vinyasa. So vinyasa has lots of different interpretations. It means thread, and it also means to move in a meaningful way, threading lots of different movements and breath together. So keep in mind what movement is meaningful to you here. What is authentic to your intention and your anatomy? Take your right hand down. Breathe in, lift your left arm up nice and high and breathe out. Breathe in, both arms high. Breathe out, left arm low, right arm high. Breathe in, both arms up. Breathe out, right arm down, left arm up. Breathe in. Breathe out. If you start to get a little lost with the lefts and rights, just remember, typically when we're going down lower or compressing, we exhale. When we grow taller and lengthen, we inhale. Simply put, inhale up, exhale down. Let's take a few more of these side to side. When you decide if you'd like to add a little extra movement, maybe you circle out your top arm a little or draw your shoulder blades back and forth. Or maybe you just keep the movement simple focusing on the stretch itself. Draw some awareness back into your breathing. Inhale up, exhale down. Take one more to each side. start to meet me with both hands to your heart center. Notice if you feel any heat in your shoulders or chest or upper back. Take a deep breath in through your nose and let it go out your mouth. All right, now that we've found our flexion and extension and our side to side bending, we want to engage in the final two spinal movements, which is twisting. If you know you have any limited mobility or injuries going on, especially in your neck or anywhere along your spine, just be really gentle, gentle with this shape and all twists in general. So take your right arm, lift it up nice and high. Take a deep breath in and imagine your spine growing long, almost like a string is pulling you tight. And start to reach over and grab onto the right side of your chair. Take your left hand, and grab onto the outside of your right thigh. You might stay here the whole time to find a deeper stretch. Inhale, squeeze your belly in towards your spine. And as you breathe out, push into both hands, looking towards the right side of your chair. If you'd like a deeper stretch, take your right hand to the back of your chair and find that same breathing. Inhale, squeeze, grow tall. Exhale, push and pull into both hands. Maybe you can start to look towards your right shoulder or even over it. Let's take three deep breaths here. And if holding on to the outside of your right thigh doesn't feel deep enough, grab the outside of the chair. Now grab the right side of the chair. Inhale, squeeze, grow tall. Exhale, pull a little bit deeper. Take one more breath here, maybe a millimeter deeper or maybe not. Slowly unwind, pull your hands back to your heart center. Notice if you feel a little bit uneven or where you feel some stretching along the curve of your spine. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. All right, let's take the other side. Lift your left arm up nice and high and take your left hand either towards the outside of your chair or maybe all the way on to the back of your chair. Take your right hand either outside your left thigh or to the left side of the chair. Whatever you choose, take a big breath in, squeeze your belly in towards your spine, grow as tall as you can. 
As you exhale, pull and push into both hands, looking either over the left side of your chair, towards your left shoulder, or over your left shoulder. Deep breath in, grow tall. Breath out, squeeze just a little bit deeper. Take one more breath here. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, maybe go a little deeper. And slowly unwind. Pull your hands to your heart. Notice if you feel a little more even along the pathway of your spine now. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And out through your mouth. All right, you've completed your first Pratapana or All Spinal Movement series. Let's get a little bit into the rest of the body. So toe heel your feet a little wider than hips distance apart. As far apart as you feel comfortable with, just making some room for our belly to fit between our thighs. Take your hands onto the tops of your thighs. Inhale to grow tall, imagining that string pulling your spine long, almost like you're a marionette doll. And take one deep breath right here, feeling the power of aligning your spine and opening up your chest. Take another deep breath in. As you breathe out, press firmly into your feet and your hands. Start to tilt towards your right thigh. Lean forward as far as you feel comfortable with. You scoop up and over to the left thigh. Breathe in as you come all the way back up. So these are called hip circles. Exhale down. Inhale up. Now if you're feeling a little bit unstable here, you can always isolate the stretch just to the neck or make your circles a little smaller. Or this can be a great place to put your pillows or blankets or yoga bolster underneath your feet. So start connecting your breath into this circling. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. As we make some clockwise circles. You can keep this movement really small or you can start to roll your head, neck and shoulders into it. Maybe it feels nice to close your eyes. Slow it down, speed it up. Find the movement that feels authentic and meaningful to you here. And see if you can start to notice some shifts and opening in your hips and your low back especially. When it feels right, start to switch directions, making counterclockwise circles. Exhale down to the left. Inhale up to the right. You might notice the side feels a little different or maybe it feels exactly the same. <sighs> Dial into your breathing and take a few more circles here. your time, meet me with your hands together at your heart center. You might feel a little bit dizzy, that's okay. Let's help correct that with a deep cleansing breath. Deep inhale through your nose and out your mouth. All right, let's find one more stretch today to help open up into the hips, the low back, and a little bit into the glutes and the hamstrings. So keep your feet where they are. If you didn't place a pillow underneath your feet before, you might really like to for this stretch. I like to toe heel my feet as far apart as I can here. Inhale, lift your arms up nice and high. Start to reach forward towards the front of your mat or towards the front of your chair. And once you can't go any further, place your hands on whatever is there. So that might be the tops of your thighs. Maybe you can walk your hands down to your kneecaps or your shins, or you might be able to rest your hands onto a pillow here. Now, if 
you're not feeling a whole lot in your low back, that means there might be some tightness going on along the pathway of your spine. You could be getting a great stretch in your middle or upper back here. If you want it to be a deeper stretch in your hips and low back, lift back up. Inhale, lift your arms up high. Keep your back as flat as you can and lead with your heart. Tilt forward as much as you can. Push some weight into your feet. Then release down as low as you can go, keeping your back flat as long as you can. Once you hit your edge, let your back curl in, chin towards your chest. Don't worry about how deeply you can stretch here. Don't worry about comparing this to a different version of yourself or whatever stretch you saw on Instagram or even what you see me doing now. This is a very personal practice designed to be beneficial to your body and everybody. Give yourself some gratitude for trying something new. Let's hold here for a few more breaths. Take an inhale and lift up a few inches. As you exhale, see if you can sink down just a millimeter further than where you were before. Remember, progress comes in millimeters and we celebrate each one. If you'd like, relax your neck here by nodding your head yes. Shaking your head no. Find your absolute edge here. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Slowly walk your hands all the way up. And curl up one vertebra at a time like you're stacking Legos on top of each other. You might feel a little bit of a blood rush once you're back at the top. Let's take a few breaths and let that dizziness pass. Notice any changes that you feel to your lower body or anywhere along your body that we've stretched today. Meet me with your hands to your heart center. Take a deep inhale through your nose and an exhale out your mouth. Now the ending pose for any asana or movement-based practice is a pose called Shavasana. Shavasana directly translates into corpse pose, which can have a bit of a morbid connotation. There's a lot of yoga philosophy centered around the idea of eliminating the fear of death or liberation from the physical body. But for today, the general idea is just being so relaxed and so still, uh, both in body and in mind, that it's almost as though we are emulating the stillness and the peace of a corpse. Sometimes this idea can be deeply triggering, especially if you've had some difficult life experiences regarding this situation. So if it's helpful to you, just think of this shape as something where we're deeply relaxing and finding deep calmness and stillness, both in the body and in the mind. So to settle in for your Shavasana, just get as comfortable as you possibly can, either in your chair or if you would prefer to lay on the floor, that's perfectly acceptable as well. Today, I'll focus on the shape in the chair. Release your hands somewhere nice and comfortable. And if it feels good, you can allow yourself to slump a little bit in your chair, maybe placing your feet on top of a pillow or a cushion if you hadn't done that before. See if it feels nice to let your chin tilt gently towards your chest. Inhale, squeeze your shoulders up and into your ears. Exhale, roll them back and down. Take a little bit of side to side movement in your head and neck, allowing the shoulders to soften fully. And start to blink your eyes closed or find your drishti, your looking place. Take a deep inhale through your nose and hold it. And exhale, let your whole body become soft and heavy. Almost like you're a rag doll that's been flopped into this chair. The first couple of times you do this, you may find yourself needing to physically adjust a little bit longer. So take all the time you need to get nice and comfortable physically. Then begin to find some stillness mentally. I invite you to begin by drawing your attention fully back into your breath. And if you're experiencing some of that monkey mind, maybe you find your balloons again. 
releasing as many thought balloons as you need to to let the mind quiet. The eventual goal of Shavasana is to have the mind be completely quiet and clear. Most likely that's not realistic for our first few times in Shavasana. My challenge for you today is see how slow you can make your thoughts. Maybe you take your thoughts from that giant hurricane swirling all around you down to a steady stream, to a gentle breeze to a light fluttering, just one or two thoughts at a time. And eventually maybe to nothing. Even if you're only able to quiet two or three thoughts, celebrate that progress. Typically for Shavasana, I leave you with a few minutes to be quiet and rest on your own. Today we'll start with just one minute. Rest deeply, and I'll let you know when it's time to wake up. Slowly start to bring a little soft movement into your body. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Slowly shake your head no. And begin to blink your eyes open, drawing your gaze back into the room around you. If you'd like, sit further forward, take a big stretch with your arms, allowing yourself to awaken after your deep meditative state. Meet me with your hands to your heart center. Take a big inhale through your nose. Let it go out your mouth. And as we've said in our past few days of practice, this meeting of Namaste, the light and goodness in me sees and bows to the light and the goodness in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for this practice today. Please let me know if you have any questions or feedback. And if you haven't already donated to my St. Jude's fundraiser or followed me on any socials, check out the description for that information. See you tomorrow.